Teenage years can be frustrating and can feel overwhelming at times. The constant pressure of trying to keep up with trends, pop culture, and maintaining an overly positive social media presence can have a hugely negative impact on your ability to enjoy what should be the most important developmental time of your life. This video will be the first in a three-part series of tips and life lessons for teenagers. Let's get into it. Lesson one, learn how to think for yourself. Now let's not confuse thinking for yourself with thinking differently for the sake of being different. Two plus two does in fact equal four, so there's no reason to go out of your way to think otherwise. Thinking for yourself is a foundational principle that you'll need for the rest of your life. You'll find yourself in situations at all ages of life where you'll have to decide whether or not to go left or right. The easiest way to start thinking for yourself is to take a moment and pause before speaking or taking action. You ever notice how Elon Musk will sometimes take an extended amount of time before answering a question? Why does he do this? Well, it's because he's assessing all options before he speaks. He says a lot of seemingly controversial things, but he doesn't care what people think of him. He's a free thinker and love him or hate him, it's made him a billionaire and one of the most recognized names in the world today. Number two, don't succumb to peer pressure. Now, while we're on the topic of Elon Musk, do you think it was well received when he told the world, I'm gonna design a rocket that can launch and land itself in order to cut costs of space travel? People thought he was crazy. Well. He's a little bit crazy, but that's not the point. I'm sure he had his fair share of haters and even those close to him to tell him that it couldn't be done. They must have done everything they could to try to talk him out of it. But in the end, he didn't succumb to peer pressure and he pushed on. Failure after failure, he pushed on until he succeeded. Nothing good ever comes from allowing peer pressure to get the better of you. Sure, you might get lucky every now and again and enjoy the very rare and underwhelming fruits of peer pressure, but more often than not, it's usually a losing proposition. You need to have the strength to fight for what you believe in and stand your ground. People may not like you in the moment, but in the long run, they're going to respect you for sticking to your values. Number three, know the consequences of alcohol. Speaking of peer pressure, is there anything in the life of a teenager that gets pushed on them more than underage drinking? Please, please, please don't drink underage. It's just not worth it. If you decide to do it, then ask yourself this. Is drinking alcohol with those supposed friends worth the likelihood of you experimenting with drugs, lowered sexual inhibitions, poor decision making, and heaven forbid you decide to get behind the wheel of a car? Even if we put aside the potential for harmful physical and mental mental side effects of underage drinking, you're still going to have the long-term consequences to deal with. Think about it like this. If you spend a huge part of your teenage years drinking and partying, how much education and positive life experiences will you have missed out on during some of the most critically important times of your life for mental development? You're going to put yourself so far behind your peers that by the time you decide to figure your life out in your 20s, 30s, maybe even 40s, it's going to be an uphill climb to catch up. It's just not worth it. Sacrificing your life tomorrow for fun today is nothing more than living your life as a constant game of Russian roulette. Number four, embrace your unique quality. This is going to sound cliche, but it is what it is. You are special, different, and unique. The problem is, fortunately, we live in a world where telling people they are special and unique has given rise to a sense of false superiority without any skills to back it up. While it is true that you are unique, you have to learn the right way to go about using those unique qualities. Take the time to outline what makes you different and then find a way to use your unique qualities to your advantage. Now, if you feel like your only redeeming quality is that you are good at gaming, for example, and I'm sorry to say you're wrong, you have more to offer. Being good at video Video games probably means you're also handy with electronics, computers, you have a basic understanding of hardware, software, and coding, you possess mental agility and probably some physical dexterity to deal with all those small components. You see how quickly one attribute that we possess can snowball into numerous unfair advantages that we can use over our peers. I challenge you to figure out what makes you unique and then generate a list of how your experiences can be used in other more meaningful ways. Number five, spend less time with people who don't deserve your time. Now, unfortunately for most people, it's often extremely difficult to embrace what makes them unique because we have surrounded ourselves with people who aren't worth your time. I'm going to keep this section brief. Weed people out of your life separate yourself from people who cause you pain both physically and psychologically. Life is far too short to allow negative people to bring you down. Number six, outgrowing people is natural. People naturally tend to gravitate towards others who share similar principles, interests, and values. Now, whether you realize it or not, when you're younger, the bonds of friendship are actually fairly weak. See, in your younger years, friendships tend to be built on very meaningless attributes, such as maybe you grew up in the same neighborhood together, or maybe you just happen to sit next to that person in class that one day. But as you get older and develop more life experience, you'll naturally begin to drift away or in some cases drift closer to people you used to be friends with. Sometimes this drift is obvious and other times it's subtle. Don't be afraid about growing people. This is natural and it's a necessary part of growth. I personally had to come to this realization after my year-long adventure of drinking from the fire hose that is military training. After having been the same person for so long, literally the exact same person all throughout elementary school, middle school, high school, and college, suddenly I was thrust into an entirely different world in the form of basic combat training, all 
officer candidate school and basic officer leader course. I was no longer the same person I was when I had finished all that training. And funny enough, I realized that I had liked this new person that I had become. But unfortunately, there were some friends and family in my life that didn't like the new me. They wanted me to stay the same. They wanted Nick Davis to stay the same weak, timid, and easily manipulated person. So I cut ties with those people. There's nothing wrong with that. It's hard to make forward progress when others are trying to weigh you down. Embrace outgrowing these people and then you can enjoy the unencumbered walk forward. Number seven, the world doesn't revolve around one person. All right, let's slow it down and talk about love. Man, those were the days. All right, listen up kids. Believe it or not, there was a time when we didn't have cell phones. And before the days of cell phones and texting, we sent these things called notes to each other in class. That's right, we would spend time putting together carefully crafted notes expressing our feelings for someone, and it was just a thrill. You know, you finally received that confirmation that you were not boyfriend and girlfriend, the skies would part and the sun would just shine brighter than anything that had come before it. You know, hand in hand, y'all walk everywhere, you know, just nothing could separate you two. Until your friends would come around you saying, you y'all are spending way too much time Together. You know, we don't see you as much anymore. You know, your siblings, your parents, they want to spend time with you, but all you want to do is spend time with your new girl or guy. Now you're not gonna to want to hear this, but the world does not revolve around one person. And I know that's that's hard to hear. It's easy to get too invested in this one person who makes us feel things that we've never felt before. But I promise you there is more to life. Guard your heart because breakups tend to happen frequently and often until you find the right one. And unfortunately, the likelihood of you finding the right one in your teenage years is pretty slim to none. Now, fortunately, it's not all bad news. You can use this time, you should use this time to grow and mature. You know, test out new methods of communicating, figure out how to initiate and carry on interesting conversations. Make your mistakes early so that when you're ready to find the right one, you'll have more to offer in that initial conversation than you believe the most underrated color is chartreuse and that your favorite food is pineapple pizza. Number eight, sex is not a side of maturity. I don't even know why I included this one on the list because none of you are gonna take my advice on this one, but I, I have to mention it. Your teenage hormones are so strong right now. You're probably humping your parents' furniture right now. But since YouTube loves a good list style video and I need to get my wife watch time up, let's include it anyway. Having sex does not make you cool, popular, or more mature than anyone else. It is order of magnitudes harder to maintain the self-discipline required to keep it in your pants than it is to give it away freely. Now all that said, while I don't encourage premarital sex, if you must do it, please, please, please use protection, specifically condoms. Practicing safe sex will at least give you a fighting chance against sexually transmitted diseases and accidental pregnancies. Number nine, breakups hurt, but time heals all. I'll come clean with you guys on this one. I didn't learn this one till I was about 22 years old. I'll keep this brief. My high school sweetheart and I, we went to college together and we graduated together. Now through a series of unfortunate events on both of our parts, we ended up breaking up. You know, that was years of high school dating, college dating, and possibly the potential of marriage. It was just gone like that in an instant. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like it didn't hurt. It did, it sucked. I probably sat in my room for two or three days. I skipped out of work, I barely ate. I was overall just a hot mess. But after day two or three, a funny thing happened. I woke up after after another restless night and I noticed for the first time there was like this tiny sliver of sunlight peeking through the blackout curtains in my room. And I forced myself out of bed and flung those curtains open and with the full force of the sun filling up the bedroom, I had like this realization. See, no matter how bad I felt in that moment, even though the world felt like it had come to an end, the sun was still gonna shine every day whether I wanted to be part of it or not. It didn't matter how much my heart hurt, the world was going to move forward with or without me, so I might as well get up and find a way to move forward. Now, it still took plenty of time for me to heal completely years, if I'm being honest. It took an unreasonable amount of time for me to be 100% completely over the pain, that loss, that betrayal that I felt in my heart because I'd lost someone that I loved more than life itself. But I can honestly say that it did get better and I finally got over her. Eventually that pain will fade and time does in fact heal all wounds. Number 10, prioritize your health. Now aside from the obvious things you should be doing to maintain your health, like not indulging in alcohol, tobacco, vaping, or drugs, use this time to get a jump start on some healthy habits. Things like doing exercise, getting quality sleep, learning to eat right, you know, they can have these long-term lasting side effects that are positive for your future. Now, while I'm not suggesting that you have to become a gym rat bodybuilder who eats nothing but grilled chicken breast, kale, and protein powder, I do encourage you to take up some form of moderate intensity exercise a few times a week and at a minimum, practice good dietary and sleep habits. This could easily turn into a video all on its own, but as a starting point, I'd recommend the following for how you can begin to prioritize your health.
health. Number one, conduct some form of moderate intensity exercise two to three times per week. Number two, limit the amount of unhealthy foods you eat. A quick down and dirty strategy I like to use is the four three meal strategy. This means that within a seven day week, you'll be eating four healthy meals for every three unhealthy meals you eat. Think about it this way. Eating a salad one day a week isn't gonna make you fit and thin. The inverse is also true. Eating clean most of the time and indulging in one unhealthy meal a week isn't gonna bust your fitness goals. If your unhealthy food intake is more than your unhealthy intake, then you should maintain a relatively healthy body weight. Number three, drink water. I am terrible at this. But the thing is, I never feel more amazing than I do when I'm doing military training in a desert environment or in the middle of summer. Now, why is this? Well, it's because I'm forced to be hydrated. I have to drink water. Trust me, drink water. You'll feel better. Number four, get plenty of sleep. Again, I am terrible at this. I've struggled with sleep for years and it's only gotten worse with the amount of screen time and caffeine we're subjected to. Find out what works for you. I try to put down screens at least two hours before I like to fall asleep. Uh, full disclosure, I'm still working on this one. More to follow in future videos. Number 11, don't compare yourself to others. This one is gonna be tough and I'll be honest, you're gonna struggle with this one until probably well into your adult years. But since you're so smart and clicked on this video, you're gonna be far better equipped to address the societal issue of falling into the comparison trap. I'll ask you to refer back to tip number four on embracing your unique qualities. Having a strong understanding of what makes you unique is gonna help you to fight the urge of constantly comparing yourself to others. Now keep in mind, I'm not telling you to completely ignore everyone around you. It's okay and I strongly encourage you to observe and learn from others. If you're a skinny 15 year old kid who wishes he was as muscular and confident as his favorite celebrity, then by all means, watch them on YouTube, figure out what they are what they do in their workouts. What do they need to do? What do you need to do to reach your goals so that you can look like them? Now here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna fall into one of two comparison traps. You don't wanna compare your beginning to someone's end. Now it's real easy to look at someone who has achieved more than you and to feel like, well, all I have to do is I just have to do exactly what they're doing right now to achieve the exact same results. Don't do that. Someone in phenomenal physical shape didn't have that happen overnight. It took years of hard work, trial and error, probably some questionable fitness practices <laughs> for them to reach their current body shape. For example, in my case, I could admit that I find it tough to see other YouTubers in my niche doing so well. And sometimes I feel a little discouraged that my videos aren't performing as well as theirs. But here's the thing. I can't expect my videos to perform as well as theirs on my first day first month or year of uploads. They, they've had a head start. They had time to work out the kinks in their content and develop a process. Pick a starting point and get to work. Use those people you look up to for influence and not, and not as a comparison. They aren't your competition, they're your teachers. Now the second trap you don't wanna fall into is playing the it's not fair game. Now full disclosure, again, I used to be really bad about this. I have always had to work twice as hard to achieve mediocre results. Now my peers could put in minimal effort into studying and somehow how they could manage to land these low effort, high paying jobs, yet I've always been stuck fighting for every inch of ground I wanted to cover in life. But you know what? That's that's okay. Like it really is okay. I'm writing my own story and those people don't have a place in it. Every struggle that I encounter is unique to me and as such, it gives me an advantage that they will never be able to replicate. Embrace your struggles and realize that any shortcomings you feel like you currently have, they are nothing more than stones that you can use to sharpen your skills down the road. Number 12, you are valuable valuable no matter what you look like. Of course, one of the most difficult comparison traps to fall into is regarding our outward appearance. Unfortunately, social media hasn't done much to boost our self-esteem in this regard. If you find yourself looking in the mirror and seeing someone you don't like, don't lose sight of how special you are and don't be afraid to lean into your strengths. It doesn't matter if you think that you're too short, you're too tall, skinny, fat, whatever your skin color is, make the best of what you've got and just wherever possible, just adjust. Number 13, change what you don't like. Now as a follow-up, up to the previous point 12, it is possible to change something you don't like about yourself and work towards adjusting whatever that thing is. Now for me, I was always a skinny kid. I was always pretty active, but I never could put on any meaningful fat or muscle mass. Now I went into basic combat training at 145 pounds and with the assistant of another basic trainee, I was able to adjust my diet and I put on an additional 20 pounds in 10 weeks. Now just to clarify, not all changes that you don't like about yourself, they don't have to be physical. Not only was my body skinny, but my mind was weak as well. I didn't realize how weak-minded I was until I spent time surrounded by people who had truly lived life. There are dozens of ways that you can elevate your mental state. Now, if you'd like me to make a video on that, be sure to comment down below. Whatever you don't like about yourself, there's generally a workaround. You know, instead of saying, I can't, try asking yourself, how can I? Number 14, being confused is perfectly normal. No matter what anyone says, at the end of the day, whether you want to admit it or not, you're still just a kid. Not having it all figured out is perfectly acceptable and you're going to be confused. Lots of people, including myself, we're going to throw 
throw a ton of information at you very quickly. You don't have to have it all figured out right now. You don't have to memorize every lesson in school or take everything people say to heart. Do your best to pick and choose what works for you and be prepared to fail if and when things don't work out the first, second, or even third time. This is the time in your life where you need to make mistakes. While you're still young and flexible and able to bounce back, this is the time where you try new things and alternate methods to see what works and more critically, what doesn't. Now, obviously you also have the option to set yourself up for success by reading books and watching videos from, well, people like me. But none of those lessons, including my own, will mean anything if you don't do something with it. You have to put yourself out there and find out what's working for you. That should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You'll never know what you're capable of until you try. Number 15, you're gonna miss being a teenager when you're older. That's the lesson, enjoy it now. That's about as blunt as I can put this. Enjoy it now while you can, because it's gonna be over faster than you realize. When you hit your 30s, people you grew up with across the board, they're gonna start to change. It's pretty easy to stay relatively the same in your 20s, but the person you tend to settle into it starts to show itself in your 30s. These are the years when you look back on your life and reflect on where you are now and how you got there. Now here's the real kicker to all this. When you're 30 years old, the only person you're gonna have to answer to about the decisions you made to get to where you are currently is you. Think about it like this. All of those people you used to hang out with who told you to do this and to do that when you were a teenager, they aren't gonna be around to live out the consequences of your teenage actions. Those so-called friends that convinced you to party and to drink with them instead of working on learning how to code or to build that online business on the side, they aren't gonna be there to bail you out when things get hard later on. The key takeaway is this, enjoy your teenage growth years and don't let others negatively influence what you want to do. You're going to regret it later. Your teenage years have the potential to be fun and transformative. Do not waste them. Cherish these moments while you can, because until Elon Musk perfects time travel, there are no do-overs. We cannot go back and try again. Now, if you're a teen watching this, it's obviously easy to tune out what most adults, including me, say. So if you stuck around this long, I sincerely appreciate it. I know I've struggled a lot with many of these concepts growing up, which is why I made this video. I let myself get stuck in the comparison trap for far longer than I should have, and I let others dictate who I saw in the mirror every day. It took me well past my teenage years to figure out who I was and what value I had. As of the time of writing this script, I'm sitting at about 48 subscribers. And while this channel is still small, I have the ability to respond to everyone. So please comment down below with any issues you've been struggling with. Maybe I can help or possibly someone else in the comments has experience with whatever you're going through. I appreciate you all for watching. Until next time.